Hi, and welcome to lesson three here in our acids and bases unit. Here in lesson three, we're going to talk about this concept of pH, which we've already been introduced to a little bit. I'm showing you a swimming pool here because if you've ever seen a swimming pool that was actually swimmable, it's because the pH is being very delicately managed. And if you've ever owned a swimming pool or have one in your house, you'll know that one of the major things you have to do is maintain the pH within a very narrow range so that organisms don't start growing in your pool. When it gets out of that range, the classic thing that happens is that the pool turns green as the algae begins to grow in it. So pH is not only a theoretical construct. It has real world consequences, certainly in the land of swimming pools, but also in other places as well. Let's go in and talk about it. pH is just a standardized way of expressing the concentration of H plus in a solution. It's defined as the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration in a solution. Another way to put this is that the molar concentration of hydronium ions or protons in a solution is equal to 10 to the negative pH. In other words, if a solution has a pH of three, that means that the concentration of H3O plus in that solution is 1 times 10 to the negative third molar, also known as 0 0.001 molar. Does this make sense? If not, take a moment and write down any questions before we talk about why. So a natural question is why is this the case? You need to understand that water has a tendency to dissociate. If you take two water molecules and you put them together, occasionally one of those water molecules will give a proton to the other water molecule, which will produce a hydroxide ion and a hydronium ion. So if we're just talking about a pure solution of water, for every hydronium ion, there has to be an equal number of hydroxide ions. At room temperature, this happens approximately for one in every 10 to the seven or 10 million water molecules. But in any aqueous solution, the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions has to equal 10 to the negative 14. If you look at one in every 10 to the seven, that's 10 to the negative seven for either of these concentrations. Multiplied by each other, that's 10 to the negative 14. This value is true for any aqueous solution. It does not change. It's known as KW, which is called the ionization constant of water. And remember, this really only at 298 degrees Kelvin. This dissociation constant does change a little bit as the temperature shifts, but 298 room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, is always a good reference value. And that's the only one that we really care about. So because H3O plus times OH minus, their concentrations, has to equal 10 to the negative 14, this has some interesting consequences. If you add an acid to pure water, you're increasing the concentration of H3O+, but remember that that concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions has to equal Kw, 10 to the negative 14. As a result, if H3O+, concentration increases, OH- concentration has to decrease as well. This works in the opposite direction if you add a base. If you increase the concentration of hydroxide ions by adding a base, the concentration of hydronium ions has to decrease as well to maintain Kw and keep it at 10 to the negative 14. The bottom line here is that for acidic solutions, the pH is going to be less than seven. The concentration of H3O plus ions has to be greater than one times 10 to the negative seven. Of course, as we're talking about negative exponents, if your concentration of hydronium ions is greater than one times 10 to the negative seven, its negative exponent is going to be lower than negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative two, which is why the pH value of any acidic solution is less than seven. For basic solutions, the concentration of hydronium ions has to be less than one times 10 to the negative seven. Less than one times 10 to the negative seven is going to cause that exponent to get quote unquote higher as it gets to negative eight, negative nine, negative 12, which causes the pH to be eight, nine, 12, and so forth. The pH of a basic solution has to be greater than seven. For neutral solutions, the pH has to equal seven. The concentration of H3O plus is equal to one times 10 to the negative seven, and the concentration of OH minus is also equal to one times 10 to the negative seven. And of course, let's stress again that every step on the pH scale is a power of 10. This representation of the pH scale over on the left shows the different pH values, and you can see different characteristic solutions that are listed on each of these. Another point that I'll make here is that pOH also exists. It works just like pH, but for OH minus. Remember that pH plus pOH has to equal 14 because the concentration of protons times the concentration of hydroxide ions always equals 10 to the negative 14. What this diagram shows you is the pH value and the pOH value of different solutions. And you can see that in each case, pH plus pOH 
equals 14, and the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions equals 10 to the negative 14. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions that you have before we move on. So now that we know what pH is, we need to have ways of measuring it. We've already talked about qualitative indicators of pH. That would be our indicators. We have reference table M to help us remember the different ranges that certain indicators change. We also might want direct quantitative measurements of pH. For that, we'll use quantitative probes, electric probes that use the electrical conductivity of the solution in order to determine the pH of that particular solution. You don't really need to worry so much about how the probes work. You'll just get a reading off of the probes when we use them in class. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of pH. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can use a solution's pH to determine if it's an acidic solution or a basic solution, or for that matter, a neutral solution. Also make sure that you can use a solution's pH to determine the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions in that solution. Finally, make sure that you can determine how the concentration of hydronium ions in a solution changes as the pH changes. If you can do all those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them for me in the comments below the video, and you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.